I'd like to welcome everyone to today's meeting. If the fire alarm sounds, please leave the building by the nearest exit and proceed to the assembly area in the car park far side of the building. The nearest exits are through reception, at the rear of the canteen, or through the doors behind you past the leader's office. Please note that the council is webcasting this meeting live on the internet and making an official recording. The recording forms part of the public record of the meeting and will be available on the council's website. Please choose your words carefully. Can members please ensure mobile phones are turned off and that background noise is kept to a minimum? To help everyone hear clearly, members are asked to remain seated and to speak clearly. Throughout this meeting, the vice chairperson will keep a list of members intending to speak during the debate. The vice chairperson will call the next speaker during the debate and will announce your microphone number on the desk before you. Well, it's not actually on the desk before you today, but the numbers are known to us. When you are called to speak, the vice chairperson will call your microphone number and your microphone will be activated. I should also remind everyone that filming, photography, and recording of this session is permitted, provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If there are any members of the public who do not wish to be filmed or photographed, and you have not already informed a member of staff, please raise your hand now so that any such photographer or cameraman may be aware. Contributions to the meeting will be timed in accordance with the time limits for debates, as in our Constitution. When your time is up, I will ask you to finish the sentence you are on and stop speaking. Finally, members, the debate we will have at this meeting surrounds matters which are deeply concerning to us as members, to officers of the council, and to the local residents we serve. Today's meeting is our opportunity to have an open and transparent debate on matters of great significance contained in the Ofsted inspection report. The discussion today should not stray into any negative comment or question about any officer, past or present, be it their conduct or capability. If you do have any concerns or questions about the conduct or capability of an officer, then those should be raised in private with the chief executive. I wish to welcome the public to this meeting. This is a meeting in public, not a public meeting. At this meeting of the full council, there is no public speaking unless a question has been received and accepted in advance of the meeting. If the public have concerns that they want to raise with the council, please write to us by visiting our Contact Us page on the internet Herefordshire.gov.uk. Item one, apologies for absence. I have received apologies from Councillor Howells, Milmore, Phillips, Shaw, Stone, Tyler, and Watson. Are there any other apologies? Ah, oh, I have Councillor Bartram has also sent his apologies. Councillor Matthews. Councillor Graham Jones. Thank you, also giving his apologies. Councillor Harvey. Councillor Har Harvey, thank you. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chairman, uh, my apologies, I'll need to leave the meeting at five o'clock. Your to apologies accepted, thank you. Thank you. There seems to be some worry that the people are not hearing properly at the back. Can we adjust that, please? The next item is to receive any declarations of interest Schedule 1, Schedule 2, or other interests by members in respect of items on this agenda. Members who have declared an interest and withdrawn from the meeting will be readmitted once the item has been concluded. Do any members have any interests to declare? 
I see no interest being declared. Thank you. Item three. Questions from members of the public. There have been five questions submitted under this item. The questions and responses have been published as a supplement on the 29th of September. A supplementary question must be a question and not a statement and arise directly out of the original question or the reply. It must take no longer than one minute to ask. If the question is likely to exceed one minute or it takes the form of a statement, the questioner will be requested to put the question immediately. Now, I have question, a supplementary question for public question number one, and I will read it out to you. I do feel that my question is not answered, so I would like to submit a second question, please. And can you please confirm that A, Herefordshire Council is not going to look into past cases to make sure that the right advice has been given by children's services to a family court, or B, Herefordshire Council is going to look into past cases to make sure that the right advice has been given by children's services to family court. Please bear in mind that not every case in a family court, children, and children have a guardian to review the advice given to family court. Supplementary question. Councillor Toynbee. No. What, what number is Councillor Toynbee? Uh, number five. Number five. Sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Speak. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the supplementary question. It would be very difficult for councils to consider each and every past case to determine whether the right advice was given in any particular case at any time. Where there are particular issues that the council is aware of, they will consider what options are available, taking into account any legal advice. Just to give a bit of context, children's guardians are allocated on all public law cases. They're not allocated on all private law cases. The local authority are not a party to private disputes and do not receive all court documentation, including final orders. Thank you. Um, sorry, I haven't finished. You haven't finished yet. Sorry. Can you suggest she gets closer to me? Yes, I think you might need to be. Okay. Can you, can you, yeah. not, can you not hear me? Don't quite chew it, but next okay, best thing I'll to it. Okay, I'll put it closer. Sorry, is that better? Yeah. I think that is better, yes. Um, sorry, so to, to finish my response. Court-ordered contact is determined by the family court based on evidence directed to be filed and upon which the court will determine the disputed issues. Evidence submitted on behalf of the local authority is just one piece of evidence that the court will consider when determining a matter and is not itself determinative. Where children are known to the local authority, it complies with its statutory duties. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Toynbee. Question two, Ms. Curry. In person, I believe, you have a question? Supplementary? Thank you. Can't hear a thing. Any better? Okay, I'll do this at the top of my voice as well. So, th thank you. Where staff, past and present, are identified as having made mistakes or kept information out of official reports to support objectives sought by the local authority, will the council be referring matters to the police, regulators, and or taking dismissal steps for gross misconduct? Will the line managers be held accountable for either allowing this practice or failing to challenge staff on reports submitted? Withholding information, an example, in my case, failing to document kinship carer offers that are not special guardianship orders and share, share internally with other staff and externally, including of the legal guardian, 
prevents natural justice from being achieved and is a form of fraud slash misfeasance of public office. This behaviour undermines public confidence in the service and brings the organisation as a whole into disrepute. Children that have been adopted where failures are identified can make civil claims against the council. How will you be making the children aware? Uh, five, please. <coughs> Councillor Toynbee. That's me. Yes, uh, thank you. I understand, thank you for your question, I understand how emotional um, these issues are and I agree that accurate recording and documentation is absolutely essential. The council has limited powers over those who are not formally employed by or have a contract with the council. When the council determines that there's clear evidence of wrongdoing, they will provide the evidence to relevant authorities for them to consider whether there is any action they need to take. To take. I want all families who've been let down by the service to contact us and to have the opportunity to be heard, and I'll be providing written response to your question that will be published. Thank you. I have a supplementary question. If everyone can still hear me okay? No, no. Sorry, one, you have one supplementary question, no more. That was my original question. No, sorry. This is part of the question, is it? Sorry. Oh, sorry. But now you, you Are we clear that this is a supplementary this question? Is your supplementary. That I'm allowed, I'm allowed I do apologise. Yes, thank you. Staff that I am prohibited from naming as part of this meeting have left before complaints were made and resolved to allow HR action to be taken. Some were locums. All presumably are working for other organisations and pose the same foreseeable risk to those and future organisations and the children and families. Yet I am no clearer as to what the local authority is doing about those individuals. Respectfully, I'm afraid allegations are not taken seriously and are only heard too late. The judge in my son's case said he completely understood my feelings towards the local authority relating to the example in my initial question, and yet complaint findings fail to accept any responsibility or accountability. As a parent, you feel unheard. This is exactly the reason the department is in the state it is in today. Care plans have to conclude with recommendations for permanency within a statutory 26 weeks. This means there is no time for parents to make any changes recommended by social workers unless that time is offered by a family member. What good is that when it is not documented? Then when mistakes are identified, the social workers do not return your contacts, including their line managers. Instead, actions continue to prepare a child for adoption, causing the kinship can, placement to break down. Can we down have the question, please? Due to a loss of faith and confidence in the service, please advise specifically what support is being offered to all impacted by these decisions, including the children and families left broken and let down by these failures, and specifically whether the local authority plans on seeking to revoke adoptions on behalf of birth families. Thank you. Number five, please. Yes, um, thank you. Again, I completely understand how the questioner feels and how emotional these issues are and how important they are. Um, it's very complex particular and sensitive, particularly when we get into HR matters. And I want to give a, a clear answer, so I'll provide a written response. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor. We now have Ms Gallagher in person. You have your supplementary ready? Uh, referring to my case, my children were on child in need plans when they were removed with two hours notice. When I was pregnant, I was told to, outweigh the, the, to await the outcome of the pre-birth assessment to see what support I needed to keep my baby. I received that report two days after I was due to give birth. Social workers had 33 weeks to complete that assessment. And independent social workers are only instructed to do assessments when the local authority's report is either compromised or disputed. Social workers left their roles or threatened to resign if they were asked to assess me. So the delays in my case were caused by Herefordshire Council. And your question, please? Well, there is a clear lack 
of support during pre-proceedings as there was none. So where was the support to keep my family together instead of just destroying it like you did? Can you just express that again? It was a little unclear from where we were. In my original question, I asked about the delays caused by Herefordshire Council and why parents had no time to address change or change to meet the concerns and to keep their children at home. As I said in my supplementary, my children were on child in need plans and then they were removed with two hours notice. With my baby, when I was pregnant, the social workers knew from eight weeks and I didn't receive the assessment until after I was due to give birth. They told me throughout my entire pregnancy that I needed that assessment to see what support can be given to keep my baby. Because that assessment was so late, my baby was removed at birth. So where was the support to keep my family together? Thank you. I think we have that now. Councillor Toynbee. Number five, please. Yes, thank you. Um, it's very upsetting to hear about this story, and um, I, I completely apologize. This is why we need to change. This is why we're here today. And I trust that our workers, um, our staff are in touch. Obviously, I can't comment on particular cases here but I trust that our staff are in touch with all families who need support. Th thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I just Mr. Add, Griffiths, no you have a supplementary question in person? Be quiet, please. I should be live. Hello? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, my question is now, thank you for your response uh, to, to my question, but I just wondered what procedure or specialist is put in place now in specific domestic abuse cases, please. Thank you. Number five, please. Councillor Toynbee. Yes, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? We, we couldn't uh, hear the beginning. Okay, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry, thank you for m your response. Um, I just wondered what procedure or specialist is put into place now moving forward for domestic abuse uh, cases that have specific uh, um, sort of liaison, ongoing cases, really. I mucked that up a bit, sorry. <laughs> Yes, I completely agree that Number this five, is... Number five, please. Sorry. Yes, um, thank you for the question. I agree that this is really important. It's really important that we have domestic abuse experts in our multi-agency safeguarding hub and that we work very closely with our colleagues, particularly in the police, on this. And I'll keep pushing on this. Thank you. Thank you. We have now a supplementary question from Ms. Reid. It is now by email and not in person. And I shall read it out to you. Only 2% and 7% of audited children's plans for the quarters were good. How will this be improved and by what date? The number of unallocated cases, that is, vulnerable children without a social worker, was 30 for quarter 4, 21, 22, and 27 for quarter 1 of 22, 23. What is the highest number of unallocated cases during each of these quarters? Frankly, 19 complaints over six months appears to be incredibly low. What is the definition of complaint? E.g., complaint to the ombudsman? Given the inadequate service, how will the complaints procedures for children and families be improved, and by when? Regarding complaints by children, is a better criterion the number resolved at stage one rather than responded to? As requested, provide up-to-date information plus the highest number of unallocated cases since the 1st the 7th of 2022. Councillor Toynbee, number five, please. 
Thank you for this question. There are a lot of questions in there, and um, they're very good questions. I want to give a full answer with all the necessary data, so I'll provide a written response. It's really, really important that we get our complaints processes right. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the public questions. We now come to members' questions. Questions from members of the public. One has been submitted. Councillor Gandhi, you have a supplementary. Thank you. What number are you? Is that Councillor Gandhi? So, sorry. Number three. Number three, please. I thank the portfolio holder for her response. And I note in particular her statement in the last paragraph that a decline over a number of years is not turned round overnight. However, I listened in to the Cabinet meeting yesterday where a professional stated that it takes between 18 months and two years to show any real improvement, and I agree with that. Yet the Council has had 18 months since the High Court judgment followed by an extraordinary full council meeting in April 21, followed by the AGM in May 2021, to put in place measures that should have by now shown some real improvement. Instead of that, the service has deteriorated further to a point... Councillor Gandhi, what is your question, please? I'm coming. ...to a point never seen before in Herefordshire. Can the portfolio holder explain why the past 18 months, which should have put us on the road to improvement, as stated by the professional, have in fact produced this devastating report. What confidence can the residents of Herefordshire have that the next 18 months will be any different to the previous 18 months? And secondly, what efforts will be made going forward to ensure that all members are regularly kept informed of the progress or non-progress within the Children and Young People's Directorate. Thank you, Councillor Gandhi. I was being quite generous to you, I think. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Toynbee, number five. Yes, thank you, Councillor Gandhi. I know how much Councillor Gandhi um, cares about this issue very, very deeply, and I'm always really happy to have a conversation with her about it. Um, I think it's a completely reasonable question, and I agree with her that, that it's taken too long to make changes. I completely agree. Um, why I think some of the basic structures have not been in place um, to allow our staff to do their best work, that takes a long time to put in place. Um, not all the right people were in place in the right positions. That took too long as well. I think another thing that's different now that maybe hasn't been there in the past is more clarity for all of us um, about where we are and where we need to go, um, more resources and more ambition. So I think things are different now, but I understand um, Councillor Gandhi's impatience. I share her impatience, actually, um, and will be judged on our results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Toynbee. And that concludes the questions from both the public and from members of the Council. We come now to item five, inspection of Herefordshire Children's Services, pages nine to 32 in the agenda. To present the recently published report detailing the findings of the inspection by Ofsted inspectors of Herefordshire Council Children's Services in July 2022. And to outline both the action taken immediately and since the inspection to address some of the concerns raised and the implications of the statutory direction issued by the Secretary of State. Please find the report from page nine in the agenda pack. Members, the item under discussion at the meeting today is the Ofsted inspection report and the steps that this council is taking to address those issues raised as part of that judgment. The report that has been circulated with the agenda is not a decision report that we are used to seeing at meetings of full council. It is a report for information only and to provide the outcome of the inspection 
and a summary of the actions being taken in response. I expect the debate to focus on the issues raised in the inspection report, and I urge members again to not name or discuss members of staff, be they current or past, or to identify any individuals. A more detailed minute of this meeting will be taken to record your comments for the corporate director and cabinet to consider in preparing the action plan in response to the inspection report. You will have read the recommendation in the report, which is to note its contents. There is no motion to propose and agree. As a convenience, I will follow the normal process with a proposer and seconder, but as it is not a report to note, I do not intend to conduct a vote at the end of the debate. The Cabinet member, Children and Families, will move and introduce the report, and she has five minutes for that. Councillor Toynbee, uh, number five, please. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm presenting to you this report on the Ofsted inspection of our children's services, which was published last week for you to note, and to outline the action taken immediately and since the inspection to address some of the concerns raised and the implications of the statutory direction issued by the Secretary of State. You have the report in Appendix 1 and the statutory direction in Appendix 2. As the Chair explained, we're not here to make a decision. The recommendation before you is that Council receive and note the Ofsted inspection report. I know you've all read the report thoroughly, and I know that however many times we read it, it doesn't get any easier. It concluded that the overall effectiveness of our children's services is inadequate. I totally accept this judgment. It's a criticism not only of our children's services, but of the whole council. And I know it's of great concern to all of us. I want to take this opportunity to again publicly apologize to children and young people and their families who have not received the support that they needed when they needed it. And I hope we'll make it very clear after this meeting where the public can find the answers, the published answers to the questions that was posed just now um, by members of the public, and I also invite people to get in touch with me directly. The Department of Education has appointed Eleanor Brazil as our Commissioner for Children's Services, and I'm very pleased that Eleanor is with us this afternoon. Welcome, Eleanor. Oh, sorry. Is that... Can you get a little closer to you? Yeah, is that better? That sounds better, I think, yes. Okay. For me, at any rate. I don't know about the rest of the people. Can, can people hear me over there? Can people hear Councillor Toynbee? Yes. yes. I hope yes, the I public can, can hear as well. Yes. So keep close to the microphone okay. and keep your voice powerful. Okay. I know that every single member of this council cares about the children and families in Herefordshire. And over the past year, the Chief Executive and Director of Children's Services have been very open about the challenges, current and historic, that they're facing as they work on improvement. We knew we were not where we wanted to be, but the heart-hitting tone of this judgment still feels like a huge shock. Some of the main concerns of this report are poor practice, drift and delay, the impact of staff turnover, and a lack of management grip over the years. Another concern has been the risks that arise when agencies don't work well enough together. Some immediate concerns were raised during the inspection, and in these cases, and in the weeks since, the leadership team acted fast and agreed with the priorities for focus, many of which had already been identified and incorporated into our existing plans. They took immediate action to increase capacity where it was needed and to strengthen our multi-agency safeguarding hub and other frontline services for children and young people. They met with senior leaders of other agencies where a multi-agency response was required and reviewed all cases identified as being potentially at risk. 
While they were here, Ofsted met many dedicated and committed social workers and managers, doing their best for our children and families. I was impressed by how open and cooperative they were. The inspectors acknowledged their dedication in difficult circumstances. They also welcomed the fact that we now have a permanent leadership team, which is already making a significant difference. Partnerships and multi-agency arrangements are mentioned in three of the nine key areas for improvement identified by inspectors, as the issues identified do not all lie solely within children's social care services. As you can see, most of these key areas for improvement are very broad and general, quite unusually so for an Ofsted judgment. So this is an indication of how fundamental systems and structures and foundations that should have been well established for years have not been. There's a limit to how much progress can be made in an organisation where the foundations to build on are not in place. A lot of progress has been made over the past few months. In particular, we've recruited more social workers, strengthened our multi-agency safeguarding hub, increased supervision, and reduced caseloads for social workers. This is absolutely crucial so that they can spend more time with children and families, because, as we all know, this work is all about relationships. This Ofsted report is a useful document for us as counsellors. And I hope you find the background and information in this report helpful. We all want the same thing, to grasp this opportunity to make real progress. The diagnostic phase has taken long enough, and we need to see results now. Councillor Tom, you've had rather of your time, but you, can you wrap up fairly quickly? Um, yes, I, I've, I'll cover the, the other things um, later. I wanted to say a few follow-ups to questions asked at Council, but if I'm running out of time, I'll just say that I'm very much looking forward to hearing everybody's contributions and comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Well, the report now needs to be seconded. Councillor Hitchener, are you going to second this report? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, do you wish to speak now or after the debate? After the debate, Chairman. You will have three minutes for that, then. Thank you. And Councillor Toynbee will, of course, have the winding up slot. And I now introduce Eleanor Brazil to address the meeting. There will be no debate or questions at this stage of the meeting. Eleanor Brazil. Um, is, is my mic switched on? Can people hear me? Yes? OK. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to say a bit about um, my role and how I will go about it. You have the statutory direction in the papers and included in the direction at the end is the terms of reference for the Commissioner role. Um, so I won't go through that in detail, but I'll say a little bit about uh, how I intend to take this forward. I wanted to say at the outset, having listened to some of your parents in the audience, that that is a very uh, robust and important reminder that what we're talking about today has a profound impact on children and their families. And I'm sure people didn't need that reminder, but actually, when I have done lots of different kinds of meetings as a, as a director of children's services or indeed as a commissioner in the past, I always ask people to start with some thoughts about what this means for children and you've done that for us, so thank you. Um, we can't make it right for what happened to you and your children in the past but part of my role is absolutely to try and ensure that from here on, children who come into the services provided by the council and their partners get a high quality response and the best response that we can give. The other part of my... Please be quiet. The other, the other part of what I'm concerned about is what we call the legacy of poor practice. And in situations that Herefordshire has found itself in, we, we absolutely know, and you've brought it home again today, 
that there are things that have not gone right for some children and their families in, in Herefordshire in past years. Um, as, as I've said, we cannot undo what's happened, but we can ensure that what can be done now to um, provide a better response and it, it happens. Um, it is very serious. Government intervention doesn't happen in many authorities and I recognise that the Council is taking it as seriously as it's possible to take. Um, my role is twofold. One is about helping to drive the improvement. It's not a passive role. I won't be sitting back and just seeing what's happening. I will also be working very closely with the leadership around what needs to happen now. So not waiting to the conclusion of my review to do that. And it's very clear that there is a, a real need to have greater clarity around standards and expectations and ambition for children and young people in Herefordshire. And I don't think that's explicit enough. And if it's not explicit, then people don't know what they need to aspire to. That work can start immediately. That doesn't need to wait for the end of my review. Um, how I go about doing this role is in a number of different ways. Um, I suspect some of you will have probably Googled me and I do have an unusual name, so that's probably helpful. Um, but I have been a director of children's services in several very different local authorities, mainly where their services have been judged um, as needing improvement and helping with that improvement. I've also had the commissioner role in six or seven different local authorities. And again, although many of the issues that Herefordshire faces are very similar to those that other local authorities I've been in are, the circumstances here, the context, the history, the people are all unique to Herefordshire. So I don't come in with a preconceived idea about what the answer is here. I will take time to find out what people think, what's been done, and what needs to be done. And that includes talking to staff within the council, not just in children's services, but in other parts of the council, at different levels, not just senior leaders, but frontline staff as well. But I will also want to talk to some of the key partners who make a contribution to um, helping support children and their families, and that will include head teachers, police, health, and the voluntary sector. Um, I, I will be attending meetings that happen anyway because people are very busy. I don't want to get in the way of actions being taken to start, not start, but to continue to move things forward. So I will attend existing meetings to help that process along. I do an enormous amount of background reading and I say this at every forum I go to, if anybody feels there is something that it would be helpful for me to see and to read, then please do send that to me. And I'm on the council system, so um, you're, you're able to do that directly. Uh, one of the things that I think the Council recognises, everybody recognises, is pace of improvement is really important. And part of the statutory direction is about taking a view in terms of the capacity and the capability of the Council to improve its children's services at pace. 
It's not just uh, an open-ended requirement. It's a, it's a requirement to do so quickly. So I will be looking at the traje trajectory of improvement, the direction of travel, what difference are we making, not just in six months or a year's time, but um, at all the time that I'm here. You will have seen at the end of the direction that there is a requirement for me to report back to the Secretary of State and the Secretary of State will want some recommendations about what needs to happen. Um, improving children's services when they have got into the position that is obvious here from the Ofsted report takes time. Um, that comment about 18 months to two years is uh, within children's services, the time scale that we tend to talk about is anything from 18 years, or 18 years, sorry, 18 months onwards um, to really uh, get to a position where you're moving from providing an inadequate service. However, having said that, Lots of changes and progress can, should and must be made along the way. I, I have never yet worked in a local authority where the children's services have been judged inadequate, where you couldn't find some examples of good practice, some examples of staff doing a good job, some examples of children and families receiving the kind of service you would want all children and families to receive. And Herefordshire will be no different. There will be some examples of good practice. We need to find them, we need to build on them, and we need to strengthen them. And we need to get to a position where that's the experience of all children who need support and help at some point in their lives. Um, I don't have an uh, idea at this point in time, you wouldn't expect me to, I've only started doing the role, about what I might conclude at the end of time, the, the, the time of the review. The only thing I would say is that it's very clear that the Council and its partners need some help and some support to make this better. I am part of that help and support. I bring a wealth of experience and knowledge. I bring a clarity about what needs to change and some sense about how you go about doing that. And I also know that councils in this position must use and will benefit from expertise from other local authorities and other children's services in other parts of the country. And part of my role will be making sure that that help and support is available and is well used. Um, I, I think uh, I've covered all the things I wanted to say. Um, it, there will be a, a report at the end of my review, um, most, I think all of the reports I've done in, as Commissioner in other local authorities are in the public domain, so if you're interested in seeing the kind of review that will happen here, um, look at the Gulf UK website and uh, there are Commissioner reports that you can find there not just ones that I've written, but indeed other commissioners and other local authorities. And it will give you a sense of the areas that I will be looking at and covering. But suffice it to say, I will be looking at frontline practice, I will be looking at leadership, I will be looking at political support, and I will be looking at the strategic leadership, the way the partners work, and most important of all, I will be looking at what it means for children and families, and alongside that, what it means for staff. So I look forward to hearing the comments from members of the Council. Um,
I will stop there. Thank you very much indeed. That I'm sure will be very interesting to us all. We now move to the debate. Members are entitled to speak once during the debate for three minutes. All questions asked will be answered during the Cabinet members summing up at the end of the debate. And the Vice Chairperson will be keeping a list of members who wish to speak during the debate. Please can members indicate to the Vice Chairperson if they intend to speak. And let me just remind you, we do have three minutes each. I'll be perhaps a little flexible, but not too much, otherwise we will not get everyone um, being, being heard. So do forgive me if I appear rather severe, but it is in the Constitution and we are trying to make sure everybody has a chance to speak. Thank you. We have... Uh, Councillor Gandhi, number three. Councillor Gandhi. Thank you, Chairman. This report makes very difficult reading and it makes me extremely angry. This is not a remote bureaucratic paper exercise. This is about our children and their families. Yes, our children, those we as councillors and corporate parents are mandated to care for in the same way that we would our own children, ensuring that they're safe, looked after and cared for, and whether they are prenatal or about to reach adulthood, we should fulfil that responsibility. In this, we've failed. We've continued to fail, and we've done so over an extended period. We've rearranged the deck chairs on the Titanic time after time, and in fact, the situation is worse now than ever before. I say again, these are our children, the children of Herefordshire, and they rely on us, as do their birth families and foster parents and their siblings, to look after them. I don't know how the rest of the council feels, but reading this report made me feel that as a corporate parents, we failed. We, we have failed. We have failed to keep many of our children safe, well cared for. We failed to listen and take into account the views of our families and young people. We have invested huge sums of money into trying to improve the lives of our children. We have set up an improvement board. We have shipped in staff from far and wide and we've offloaded others, and yet we are still failing our children and their families. Nobody can say this outcome is due to a lack of resources, but whatever we are doing and have been doing since the last Ofsted report of 2018 is obviously not working. It is clear that a radical change of approach is essential and that those councillors who really care about our children and their families must be part of making that radical change. We have spent a lot of time looking backwards, yet we have learnt little from past failures. We must now look forward, and if I hear the words, it's been the same for the past 20 years and will continue to be so, I shall scream. Those utterances are defeatist. We are in the last chance saloon, and all of us must now work together, forgetting party politics, just do everything we can to improve the lives of the children and the families of Herefordshire. We must all challenge more. We must question what is the Improvement Board actually improving. If it isn't, why isn't it? And what has got to be done to make it an effective body? I am ready, as a corporate parent, to do whatever is necessary to improve the service for our children and families. 
can the can rest of you. Can you please? That's it. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Slightly over the time, but I think it's <laughs> worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now the next one. Was it? Who's who's next? To, who wish to speak? Okay, I see. Her. Did you have a hand up? No. But who's uh, it? Councillor Hewitt, number twenty. Councillor Hewitt, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope I can be heard. Yes. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that personally. As a new councillor, I'm utterly devastated by this report. It's been incredibly painful to listen to the voices today. And um, it was really on the back of the YY case that I decided that I'd have to speak up. It wasn't an area in which I felt that my services would be the best placed. However, scrutiny is utterly dedicated to to upping the game. We're happy to have questions from any member of the public or from any councillor that help us shine a light and shine a torch. We've been, actually we have been very ambitious since last May. We've, we've, we now have a co-optee by experience who's been an invaluable asset already on scrutiny. We have had an LGA self-assessment, which has encouraged us to actually get briefings from officers about how the service works, because many of us were unclear about all the different branches of the directorate, and that makes it more possible for us to ask questions. We're ambitious to take up the LGA's offer of working with Telford and Rekin as partners in practice, Unfortunately, that hasn't yet happened. A lot else has happened. Um, what else do I want to say? We will continue to engage with all stakeholders in this respect. Sorry. Chef, please, please, okay. Councillor, so, let, let her um, have her say, please. Just leave her be to say her piece, please. I would say that what's happening is a better, so we now have, and the other thing I wanted to say is we now have a scrutiny officer who at every moment is pushing us and we are doing our best. So that's Michael Carr and he's just been amazing with children's scrutiny and is pushing us harder and harder and we're ready to step up to the game. So um, I would say we're achieving a much better thread of communication which will only continue to drive practice forward. So you have my utter commitment, Eleanor and the families and the families of Herefordshire that we will continue to do our level best. Thank you. Th thank you, Councillor. Next one. Next speaker is Councillor Matthews, number 12. Councillor Matthews. All right, thank you, Chairman. Uh, one or two issues which I was going to comment on have already been mentioned, so I'll uh, <coughs> reduce those. Um, mainly for the last 10, 12 years, there's been obvious uh, uh, reasons given for us failing in report after report after report. And we've just failed to address them over the years, which has brought us into the situation we are today. Uh, <coughs> The, the December 2019 and July 21 reports are clear that local authority had made little progress in improving quality of practice for children in need. I mean, it's been blatantly looking at us, and some of us have been raising the issues over a good many years. <clears throat> and of course, I have to refer to Justice Keane, who judgment in 28th of March says, not fit for purpose. It's sad, but that's the situation. <laughs> And then what needs to be done to improve is, is uh, um, overall there's a lack of agreed systems and practices to assess risks and manage concerns. Poor decision making, poor understanding of risk and effective management oversight leave children uh, at risk of harm. So that's, that's uh, a few of the issues I've picked up but other members have mentioned that so I reduced what I was going to say on that. I refer, Chairman, to uh, partner agencies. 
They are described as being underdeveloped and require substantial improvements. I've frequently raised this, as the Chief Executive knows, for the last 12, 18 months. And it's been blatantly obvious that a lot of the problems that have got us into this state have been bouncing about there for years and they haven't been addressed. Sadly, senior officers have a lot to answer for because of a total lack of adequate supervision and general management, and this would appear in one of the, is one of the main reasons for the failure of children's services. Again, this is something that we've raised, myself and my colleagues, repeatedly. My main concern is we have failed so many of our vulnerable young children. <clears throat> And that's so sad in a, in, a, in a council that's always had a reputation of being efficient and answerable to the public and the electors. The taxpayers of Herefordshire have also had to carry the huge burden of cost involved in court cases and compensation, etc. Um, a lot of what I, said, I was going to say has already been said, so I think that, that uh, to sum it up, uh, um, it's a very sad day for this council and urgent and immediate action is required to address this appalling situation. Thank you very much, Councillor. Next one. I haven't got anybody else indicating yet. Do we have no more speakers? Oh, Councillor, Councillor James. <coughs> Councillor James and number 11. Councillor James. Thank you, Chair. Can I say I, I'm appalled at this particular meeting and the way in which it's been conducted. Families have been intimidated into not attending this meeting. They've been told most of their questions have been ruled out of order. You've heard some of the questions that, and the, the supplementary questions that have been given by some of the families. Where is their voice? That's the only time at which they will be heard. To curtail the debate to three minutes is ridiculous per, per speaker, because there is so much that can be said. The lack of accountability is appalling. The fact that no one, only one person, a senior within the council until yesterday when the cabinet member rather belatedly said sorry, no one has apologised other than the chief executive, who has probably the least to apologise for in this miserable saga. It is appalling what has happened. Appalling what has happened. Not just, oh, it's unfortunate, and it's worse than this Ofsted report, because if this doesn't take into account the families and their voice. Lives have been destroyed. I was chairing the site planning meeting on Tuesday, and I came back, I had to rush back to a family who the mother had tried to commit suicide, the daughter was in hospital, with anorexia, and they were still being bullied by social workers. What is that going on? Going on this week? That until the culture is changed, then lives are going to be continued to be ruined by this council. There is no accountability. And for the leader and the cabinet member, when contacted by families, especially the leader, to say, I don't deal with individual cases. That is the response. It is our response as corporate parents to deal with when we're contacted by families. We are destroying their lives. And it's sooner that some of them took account and senior councillors take action and consider their position and resign as from their posts. Thank you. And Chairman, if someone comes back on that, I will reserve the right to reply, if I may. Uh, thank you, Councillor James. The I'm next, sure we'll, yeah. next speaker is Councillor Swinglehurst, number, number three. Thank you. Um, it, it's very tempting to, to, to point a finger and blame somebody else and take yourself out of the firing line. It's really tempting. But do you know what? We're all corporate parents and we are all responsible. Absolutely. 
So I read the report again and again, and it's really hard to read. And listening to the parents and families that we have with us today, my heart goes to you, it really does. But we have to find a route to improvement. We have to find a way forward here. I was looking at the comments of CEOs and leaders of councils that have made this difficult journey from inadequate to good, because it's important that we learn from others. And one of the uh, really consistent threads of what they were saying, and you can see it in the Ofsted report as well, is the vital, vital business of stability of workforce, stability and sufficiency of workforce. If you don't get that right, nothing else will come right. And so I started to consider what, where, where are we at with that? Where, what are we doing? And, and it's in the, um, the improvement plan, which uh, Ms. Brazil is talking about improvement at pace. It's delivery, it's pace, it's making it happen. And yet I look at the, the, the improvement plan, the Children and Families um, Statutory Improvement Plan, which has, a, has three phases of delivery. And the first phase is ending March 22, and it, in, and it includes stability of workforce. But we aren't there, we aren't even nearly there. Where is the urgency? We have to deliver on that. We are all part of the problem, we are corporately responsible, we've all got to be part of the solution. And I would say to the executive, if, we, if you want us to act together, let us contribute to the solutions. So I don't doubt that we all want to see meaningful improvement. But as a member, I'm not being asked for my view. And it's dismal to spectate. Yeah, it really is. Collaborative working might get us where we want to be. We, we're all responsible. And we owe the children of Herefordshire a much better service than we are currently and have historically provided. We've got a long way to go and the only way to get there is one step at a time. We have to take people with us. We need to take our officers and social workers and most importantly we have to take the children and families with us. At the moment it feels as if we're in Dante's dark wood and the straight way is lost. But I'm hopeful that with the guidance of Ms Brazil and the honest endeavour of all we may find our way through. But my first and final preoccupation is to consider the welfare of the children, what is right for them, come what may. We cannot and must not take the easy route of shrugging and saying that the past is to blame for our present situation. We must have agency, we must have urgency, or we will fail. Thank you, Councillor. Next speaker is Councillor Lester, number four. Thank you, Councillor Lester. Thank you, Chairman. And um, I listen with interest to all of the comments that have gone before. It's so easy to feel angry, but I think we must feel angry. Not angry so that we can apportion blame and start arguing about who should be angry with who, but angry because corporately we're letting down families and children. And it is extremely upsetting to hear that families are so frustrated when they're trying to fix their own families and then to read an Ofsted report that children are at risk of harm, they're not being protected from harm. And I, I think we have to just own that rather than write reports that we've got before us that try to downplay that very, very point that Ofsted have put. If you look at the, the paragraph 11, and I mentioned this in Cabinet yesterday, where they're trying to downplay the fact that Ofsted have said, used the word harm. This is deeply concerning, but we should not interpret this as meaning that all or significant children are at risk or are unprotected. How do we know that? How on earth do we know that when we've got this report before us that just speaks of the chaos and disarray that this service is operating under. You know, we, we can't say that. We've got, to be, we've got to be open and honest about that and accept that. Councillor Toynbee says she accepts the report, and, and, you know, I appreciate that sentiment. But we can't write reports like that when we haven't got a clue given the findings of this Ofsted report. Now, I think it's really important that we do focus on moving forward. I'm really disappointed that the improvement plan has just gone nowhere to delivering on what we need to deliver. But the, the biggest frustration I think I find is that 
Once we're at the watershed moment, there's always this thought that we've got to organize this meeting and organize this update and organize this progress report and you know, take up lots of officer time with, well, what are we doing about what we're doing? That, to me, is really counterproductive. What we need to do, as Councillor Swinglehurst said, is we need to focus on our workforce. We need to make sure that they've got the resources. And we need to leave them alone to get on with it, rather than expect them to turn up at meetings time and time after again, checking to see what they're doing. You know, there needs to be more hands on deck and more working so that we're not making these mistakes repeatedly over and over again. So, you know, all hands on deck, all help to the officers that need it. And finally, I would just make this one plea, um, which I'm sure everyone would agree with, we must respect the families that we're dealing with, because if we don't, what are we doing? So, you know, let's move forward, but let's not cut people off while they're trying to explain to us what their personal experiences are. Let them talk for 10 minutes if that's what it takes. You know, let, let's hear it and then let's not have this, well, you've had your say, so that's it. And to feel or hear that certain people don't want to come to this meeting because they feel too intimidated is lamentable. So let's stop that culture. Let's encourage these people to come forward and let's really fix things for the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Next speaker, Councillor Simons, number 15. Councillor Simons. Am I on? Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, I, first of all, I would like to pay huge tribute to the families who've had the courage to come here today and, and share their frustration. Um, but I'd like to make a very specific request to Eleanor Brazil that you make the time to meet with all the families who've come here today and spend time to understand face-to-face -face what their experience and frustrations have been. Thank you. That was my quite request. I, actually, I've been taking notes on my Sorry, phone. Sorry, can we? Yes. Yes. Next speaker. Councillor Gemma Davis, number six. Councillor Davis. Five, isn't it? Oh, no, it is six, sorry. You got it? Yeah, um, yeah well, echoing what a number of people have said, I, I feel deeply uncomfortable when we cut people off when they're talking, especially when they're as impassioned as they are and when they've clearly not been listened to for many years. The report says that, the report tells us those things. I think there are some occasions when the rules kind of go out of the window, and I think this is probably one of those. Um, there was a question around um, what's different, and I raised the exact same query yesterday in Cabinet, what is different this time? And to me, you can quote all of the judgments, we can have a look at all of the reports that have come in, but each time they focused on different areas, and they said this particular area isn't doing so. All of the efforts, instead of going to one area, moved across to another. This was the absolute cracking of the nut. This was, let's rip everything out and let's look at it. In a way, I wish we'd had this way before because we would be in a different position than we are today. But this is our first opportunity to see absolutely everything that is wrong with our council. Um, I was speaking to another councillor around this and they said, if I hear anybody say ever again that this is the Herefordshire way, they are going to lose it because the Herefordshire way is clearly wrong and that's where we need the guidance, that's where we need the support. Um, I made a comment earlier in group meeting that after looking back at cabinet meeting yesterday and hearing lots of different people's opinions, there was quite a lot of push towards Eleanor and what she could fix and I thought and I had time to reflect on that. It's not Eleanor's job to fix the problem. Eleanor's job is here to show us what best practice is, to tell us where she thinks that our fundamental flaws are. It's down to every single one of us, not the cabinet member, not cabinet, not the leader, not the chief exec, absolutely every single person involved in Herefordshire Council and anybody that is taken any interest in children's services. This is on absolutely everybody's shoulders. I find it really difficult when people say, um, Think about it with you, as if they're your own child. I don't have children, 
And I will say, I don't need to have children to know that our services have failed every child that has come into our care. And that's what we've got to fix. Um, for me, I just think the report says we failed in every single area. And I just can't, can't keep thinking about that without a tear coming to my eye because I just can't believe that there was nothing to grab onto to make you feel better. Um, so thank you again to all the families. I'm sorry that you felt that you were cut off. I'm sorry for anybody that felt intimidated. I would like a response formally from the monitoring officer from what Councillor James has raised around anybody that was told that their questions were not valid. I'd like to understand that and I'd like that to be shared with all members. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. The next speaker is Councillor Stark, number nine. Councillor Stark? One. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Chair, I would like to take this opportunity to look forward, if we may. I mean, we're all shocked by the report, and I really do want to try and look at this debate as a chance for us to perhaps share some ideas with the Commissioner, uh, Children's Services Commissioner, as to how we might move forward. I think with any service organisation, and a lot of us have got experience in trying to deliver services, that there's a tendency to look at it from the point of view of the providers, rather than the point of view of those receiving the service. And that is one of the big issues I think we are facing here with this particular report. And what I want to consider with you today is how do we involve those receiving the service more in actually the improvement plan that we want to take forward here rather than looking at it from the telescope of the service itself. Now, one tried and tested way forward is to involve those receiving the service in focus groups. And I, want, I would like to put that on the table. I would like to have some of the families who have been concerned in receiving our services to be involved in a focus group where they don't only share their experiences of what has gone wrong, but they have the opportunity to suggest where they think improvements could be made from their point of view rather than from the service provider's point of view. I think that's one of the big issues for us. We have not done that in the past. We have always looked at it from the service providers, from the council providing that service. And I would ask the commissioner to look at that and to involve the families in a focus group where we get their views on what the improvements can be, not simply on what's gone wrong in the past. And that would be my suggestion, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next one. Next speaker, Councillor Johnson, number one. Councillor Johnson. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, with the objective of trying to uh, establish something positive to, uh, upon which we can focus for moving forward, I'd pick up on something that both Councillor Lester and Councillor Davis had said that it's everybody's problem. <clears throat> I put it to you that where it's everybody's problem <clears throat> inevitably means that it's no individual's problem. And this case, to me, highlights the worst of the inefficiencies that occur in public life, where everything is everybody's problem and no individual is responsible. What this case says to me, as much as anything, is if you want to move forward doing something positive, then let's have some individuals whose names are nailed to the board. It is their individual responsibility that they become answerable for what goes on or what does not. <clears throat> and finally, Chairman, if we want to involve all members of this council, and we're all going to feel <coughs> equally responsible, it will require that we all get access to the information, what is going on. I don't know about the rest of you, but I hear precious little about what's going on at the coalface. I would find it ridiculous after that for someone to say, you are responsible. My reaction will be, to what? 
So for me, it's a question of leadership and information so that we all know what's going on. Thank you, Chairman. Th thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next speaker, Councillor Tillett, number nine. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to pick up two points that have already been touched on. Um, a number of colleagues have referred to the regrettable way perhaps this meeting has been run and the fact that so many families and their representatives have either been cut short or not been able to be heard at all. I understand that the families are going to hold a public meeting to which we are all not only invited, but I think almost obliged to attend, where we will be able to hear uncensored, unfettered, unrestricted, the stories that these families have to tell, that these families need to tell, that these families must tell if we are to move forward at all. Secondly, colleagues have made much of avoiding the blame game um, and saying that we all share responsibility. But we cannot shy away from the fact that there are councillors in this meeting who have been paid very substantial special responsibility allowances. And it seems to me if you take the allowance, you have to take some responsibility that goes with it. And this isn't necessarily about saying what has gone before, but it is very much about what goes ahead. And are those people in the positions of responsibility able to look at themselves in the mirror and say, have I done the best I possibly can during my period of office? And more importantly, am I the right person to take these changes forward? Am I the person or persons that the families over there and the many other families who aren't here will have confidence in, will believe in, will trust in to bring about the changes? And if they are not the sort of person who can inspire that trust, then perhaps it is right and proper for them to step down and enable a new broom to sweep clean. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next speaker is Councillor Summers, number 22. Councillor Summers. Thank you, Chair. Um, to start with, I do have an issue with public being cut short. It's not just here today. It's quite many, many council meetings. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they are for the public, and they, they have the least say, which I'm not very happy about. So, but that's an ongoing issue I think we need to change. It's, uh, they're, they're cut short, but some elected members are allowed to go on and on and on. Anyway. Um, there's two questions. Are we looking to other successful councils? I believe we are. I've been researching a few, and there's a couple of good ones that are doing outstanding work in children's. Uh, the other question I have, I see that there's a lack of, of uh, looked after children. We, we are very involved with looked after children, or we should be. Uh, they have a lot to say, and they can be very expressive. I'm surprised we don't have any here today because we have some good ones and I've heard them before make their feelings known and I think we should be hearing those feelings today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next, please. Councillor Balderson. Councillor Balderson, number, number what is it? Number four. Oh, is my microphone? Yes, thank it is you. Not. Thank um, you. Just following on from um, Councillor Summers' point, I think we did make a change in the constitution that now allows uh, cabinet to hold forums with the public and one of my suggestions is perhaps this is a time when we should be uh, using that new uh, opportunity within our constitution. Thank you. <laughs> Next one. No further speakers. Oh. Councillor Chowns. Then, then Councillor Marsh. Number seven. Okay. Councillor Chowns. Thank you. Um, like everyone here today, I am deeply saddened by the report, and I, I want to say that I am so sorry that children in Herefordshire have been failed by this council. Um, 
I was really struck by the contributions of Councillor Gandhi and Councillor Swinglehurst in particular. Um, and Councillor Gandhi asked, are we, all of us, each of us, ready to do everything that we can to improve? And I answer yes, absolutely. I'm determined to do more and better to turn this situation around. We've shown as a council that we are prepared to put more resources and effort into this. We've had a big focus on this for the last 18 months. Um, but the Ofsted report sadly tells us that there is too little to show for these efforts so far. It does say that recently there's been some small progress from a significant low base, but the pace has been too slow. And as Eleanor Brazil said, it's all about improving at pace. So we need to do better, absolutely. We need to ensure that the resources that we are putting in, the money, the time, the energy, the effort, is going in the best possible way. We need to ensure that we get as quickly as possible to being a place with a permanent, effective workforce and with consistent, excellent practice where learning is shared so that every interaction with a child or a family is effective and productive and useful and positive. Social workers do a really difficult and an incredibly valuable job and we need to ensure that Herefordshire becomes a place where they can all do their best work. I, like colleagues, some colleagues have mentioned, I have taken some hope from reading in the last couple of weeks about places that have taken that difficult journey from inadequate to good. We know that it is possible. We know what it would look like. We know we need support in Herefordshire and we know that we want to take um, inspiration and ideas from the example of other local authorities that have made that positive journey, which is what we are determined to do. And finally, I just want to say that we have to focus our needs and attention on children. The Ofsted report says this as well. It's the voices of children that must be heard, and it's the safety and welfare of children that must be central to everything that we do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next one. Next speaker is Councillor Marsh, number 15. Councillor Marsh. Thank you. Is that on? Yeah. Thank you. I, I was noting from long-standing councillors what a long time this has been going on and thinking about all of us who, one way or another, have at different times been called on to play our part and do our best. And how really what a large number of people in this room that applies to and how even doing your best can be is not a guarantee of success. So we are in this very difficult place. It is really important. We've, we've talked a bit about the degree of challenge. Some of us have said, well, we must challenge everyone all the time. Others have sensibly also said that if our staff spend the whole time being challenged, they can't get on with anything. And it's this difficult balance between challenge and support and I just want to say a bit more about support for our staff. We have tried, someone said, oh, we've been given all the resources we need, but a crucial resource that money can't instantly buy is staff who are prepared to come and live in Herefordshire. And I know we have some excellent staff, for instance, who are, I forgot what they're called, family advisors, but I personally am sure that we can grow, if we can provide a route to qualification that we can grow people. Obviously it doesn't hit the 12 weeks, but I know we have done um, work with newly qualified social workers and I do hope as part of this improvement we will look really seriously at how we can provide routes for the many excellent people in Herefordshire. We know how many people in Herefordshire are carers and are skilled carers could be part of our service. And of course, the critical thing is that all our teams are using the strengths of those they work with. We, we have done such a lot on working in adult services with the strengths of our clients, our customers, whatever we want to call them. And 
it's obviously critical that our staff feel supported and that those they work with feel that they themselves are able to put forward the, the best of themselves to do whatever is needed to help them with their families. Thank you. Th thank you, Councillor. And the next one? Councillor Kenyon, number 17. Councillor Kenyon. Thank you, Chairman. I'm good to go, am I? Um, won't be too long today. I'm... Well, yeah. Do you know what? I don't go to dinner parties, but if I did, they'd say, what do you do for a living? Or what do you do? I well, sure. The worst thing could have been saying I'm a councillor, county councillor, because that's pretty right down there. But at the moment, to say you're a social worker is even worse. The morale must be on its arse, and there's no other way to, to put that. When there's no sense of pride, because it's like when a lion, some of these are lions out there doing the job, because it's a really, really tough job to do. But when they're led by donkeys, they become donkeys, and that's what we need to address, and it's been like that for many years. It hasn't changed since, I, mean, I think, uh, it might have been one year into being a councillor a few years ago, when social care came to the county, it was given to the county, with the, the uh, chief executive of the time got very excited, so he got a, a double pay rise for doing the, the same thing. Um, but it's never been quite been right. We've never quite got a grip of it. We have to look at things in a different way. We look left, we look right. There's, there's not many good, outstanding councils out there. And, but we need to be looking at that and seeing how we can achieve that. I've, I talk about scrutiny and I, I, I shouted across the room at my colleague because I'm so angry about scrutiny because scrutiny is ineffective. It doesn't do what it says on the tin. And I've said that many times. I've sent many emails to Chief Executive, to leaders of the Council, and they all get ignored. Now, I don't say for a second I've got all the answers, but why aren't they put out there? Why aren't they put to the wider audience for people to go, well, that possibly is a good idea. It wasn't a bad idea. I want to say sorry to the families. I, I know some of the families personally over there because I've worked with them. Well, one of the young ladies across there, I sat in a room with her on many occasions when they said she had a mental, Ill, mental health illness and she was sick, she couldn't look after her children, which wasn't the case. She was just very shy, very shy in a room speaking to people. But she bloody well came here today and spoke to you lot, and I can't think of anything more scary. That's how passionate she feels about it. I'm going to leave it there before I get myself into trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kenyon. Next speaker is Councillor Hay, number 21. Councillor Hay. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Um, well, obviously, we've, we've heard from quite a lot of members this afternoon, and, and, and I will agree that this report is completely harrowing. Um, there's no way that you can sugarcoat this in any way. Every element of this is just damning. And personally, that, that I've taken that very hardly, hard to my heart that, that, that we've come to this point. But we have spoken a lot about the journey we are on and how we are going to move beyond this. And one of the things that's occurred to me from, from, from comments from across the room, from, from fellow members, is that we have got a lot of collective skill in this room. A huge amount of that and it is a, from a sense of frustration from my point of view that we're not able to utilize those skills to help us improve our situation so I would suggest that there is some mileage in extending the membership of children's scrutiny and making sure that we can have people with the right skills across parties to be doing this job and if people are prepared to put themselves forward, and I know there are plenty of members who want to put themselves forward, that that is something we can consider to make sure that the scrutiny we are doing and the challenging we are providing is going to be really strong. Th thank you, Councillor. No further speakers? Do we have any further speakers? Ah, Councillor Pagan is number eight. Thank you. And Councillor Moore. Thank you. Um, as one of those responsible for the situation that we are in, I find it heartbreaking to be here and to hear the stories of the families. Um, I, I believe that we collectively want to turn this around. 
Uh, one of the things I would like is the assurance that staff who have tried to challenge the status quo over the years and have suffered for that are given the support that they need um, to ensure that they can actually use their experience in Herefordshire to improve the lives of the children that they are working with. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Uh, believe now, Councillor... No, Councillor Milne. Councillor Milne. Number 16. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my friend, uh, Councillor Hewitt, referenced the achievement of Telford and Rekin Council, who, which achieved an Ofsted outstanding rating in its children's services. Gosh. Uh, it would be invidious to single out uh, Telford and Rekin. It's uh, in good company with uh, Cornwall, Hampshire, Suffolk, Derby, North Lincolnshire, in all achieving outstanding ratings in their children's services. For Telford and Rekin, the inspector was able to say, children and families receive help and support where they need it. Children are valued and listened to by social workers and other supportive staff. When you need help because you are vulnerable or at risk, your needs are assessed quickly and services are put in place which are helpful. Those objectives seem to me to be absolutely baseline and whatever sweat, toil, sweat and tears it may require, I believe that Herefordshire has it in it, eventually, to achieve an outstanding rating. And I would like to think that a report such as Telford and Rekin's were pasted on the door of every one of us that reminds us that we are on a journey as corporate parents and as, and as a, a staff of, of this authority that we can eventually get an Ofsted outstanding rating. So let us put ourselves on that journey. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Who is next? No further speakers at the moment, Chairman. Does anyone wish to speak? Everyone's had their... Yes, I know. Yes, I'm just, I'm just showing sure there's not anyone there. Uh, as there are no further speakers, uh, unfortunately, due to the rules of the, of the Constitution, I can't. But I would invite you, if you wish, after the meeting is closed, certainly to come and speak to me and any other councillor who wishes to remain behind. I offer you that. And I do apologise if you find this hard and draconian, but we are somewhat constrained by our Constitution. And I'm trying to be as flexible as I can and giving people extra time to speak, etc., etc. And I do invite you, after the meeting, to come and talk to me or to anybody else who wishes to remain behind. And uh, I, I can't, can't, it's very hard to hear you, I'm afraid. So, uh, I'm afraid not in this meeting. I'm, I'm sorry, I do apologise. And I'm not trying to be destructive Chairman, to you, Chairman. but I, I do advise you to come Chairman. afterwards. Chairman, yes, is it Councillor Anson would like to speak? Number one, much. Can I have a? Pro I have a proposal. Can we formally bring this meeting to a close and then informally let our families come and speak to us? Well, well Councillor Anson, I've just suggested that. The very thing I've just suggested. Sorry? Yes, yes. yes I'm, I'm going to. Yes. And no further speakers. I now call upon the uh, seconder of this proposal, of this, um, well, note, to speak. Thank you. Yes, thank you, councillors, for your contribution to this debate. Like you all, I was deeply saddened by the report from Ofsted. It is clear that families and children in the care of Herefordshire Council have been let down and deserve better. I would like to apologise again to each family that has suffered. It is a cause of concern to councillors that this situation has been around, been around um, in part for, for, for so long. Uh, why has it continued when councillors say they knew about it? And I think the answer in part is about culture. The old culture 
was where information was taken at, on its face value, where challenge by councillors was not dealt with appropriately. This needs to change, and it is changing. The second element of culture is a tendency, I think, within the council to tell people what they need uh, and think that we know best. Well, we do not know best, and throughout my term, term as leader, I have sought to find out the opinions of people, to find out what they need. So do things ground up, so identifying the need and then working out what, how we can satisfy that need. That relates to children as much as anything else. We need to listen to the voices of the family and the voices of the children. So it's a bottom-up approach, reaching out to people in this way. As leader of the council, I would like this to be a whole council commitment, emphasising our similarities, not our differences. And I welcome all the speakers, all the councillors today who have mentioned that. Children and families deserve our support and our solidarity. I look forward over the next 12 weeks to work, working with Eleanor Brazil. Eleanor, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I, I, I know in your heart you, your, your desire is to do the best for children, and we very much look forward to you helping us to achieve that in this county. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Leader. Now, Councillor Toynbee, it's your turn to sum up and answer questions as, as you find suitable and appropriate. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, colleagues. I'm very grateful to everyone for all your comments, and I've taken them all on board. I've been scribbling away, um, so I'm going to try and address as many as I can, so forgive me if it's not the smoothest of summings up. I, I wish I were as um, eloquent as Councillor Gandhi and Councillor Swinglehurst, who expressed everything so well and um, so beautifully, and I, I agree with every single word they said. I'm aware that it's impossible for me to respond fully to every single point raised, but I can assure everyone that all the points will be fed into our action plan. And I'm always, as I always say, happy to have follow-up conver follow conversations with people. Um, going back to one of Councillor Gandhi's questions, um, this isn't at all the last chance for all councillors to be involved um, in making progress and getting on with this. And it does um, state in paragraph 23 of today's report that members will be able to contribute to the development of the plan through the scrutiny committee, through member briefings. And I agree with everyone who said, let's get together informally. Do, do we want to add more formal governance structures? I'm not sure about that. Um, but as, as has been said, that so many of us in here have got the skills, have got the experience, have got the passion, who really care. Let's sit round a table. Just, just get in touch with me. Something that um, we've had a lot from colleagues over the years is, I've been saying this for years, I've been saying this for years, I've been raising issues for years. Um, yes, that's true, and saying things and raising issues clearly hasn't been enough. Um, what was needed was some decisive action, but for that, to take decisive action, we need a clear picture, and I understand that over the years it's been very frustrating for members that there has been a lack of clarity. And I think clarity is a really key theme that's come up this afternoon. Um, and that has made it difficult. And it's something that is one of my priorities. And I think we're getting there. H how do our systems work? What are the pathways through our complex processes? Where are the young children, um, the young people in our care living? What happens if I pick up the phone and because I'm worried about a child? As Councillor Johnson said, what is going on at the coalface? It's really difficult for us as members to do the right thing if we don't have a clear picture, and this has been frustrating. And I think we are getting there, and that's one of the things that I feel is underway, overdue, um, and that will really help and support us. We're not social workers. We're elected to stand up for and speak up for the people of Herefordshire. Graphs and rag ratings and all that kind of stuff they're very important, but we need to get back to the basics of asking how does it feel to work for Herefordshire Council? Um, if I work for Herefordshire Council, do I, do I feel free to speak very openly about any concerns that I have? That's really important. How does it feel to work with Herefordshire Council? We had um, some of that earlier on, and I want to know how it feels from the perspective of the families. 
As Councillor Stark said, that is our starting point. How does it feel for the people we work with? Um, and when you look at the Ofsted judgment itself, um, it, it's very striking to me that it is expressed in terms of experience and impact. It isn't jargon. Um, it's the kind of language that we all understand. So I really welcome that. And as you heard from Eleanor, Eleanor doesn't speak in jargon either. She's interested in what we're doing to support children and families. Um, so we all agree that that should be our starting point. Um, I agree with Councillor Lest and Councillor Marsh that there's a balance to be struck between letting the staff get on with their absolutely crucial work, um, they're under high pressure, and also us wanting to update what's going on, how's it going. So we have to get the balance right for that. And to colleagues who asked, are we learning about, are we learning from others? Absolutely, yes. I'm in very frequent um, communication with colleagues from around the country um, who've been through similar journeys, what we can learn from them, how we can share best practice. And I'm really impressed and grateful that so many members have also done that, that so many of you have, have really not just read the report, but researched, have been online, have contacted colleagues, have really put the work in and are putting the work in to see how we can all play a role um, in making progress. And I really appreciate that. And I think it's a really encouraging sign. To those colleagues who've had conversations with me, thank you very much. Please um, have more. I want to learn from everyone and anyone who has experience and suggestions. I completely agree with Councillor Gandhi and others who've said that. Let's sit round a table. And let's all remember, as has been said, at the heart of what we do is are our children, young people and families getting the support that they need when they need it where we need it. How does it feel from their perspective? So as we leave this meeting today, please be assured that we as an administration have taken on board every word of what has been said. We're not complacent at all. We're very ambitious, very ambitious for our services. Let's get to Ofsted good rating. We must get to good. Hold us to account, judge us by results. And let's remember that our children, young people and families need us to respond as a whole council. We need to look ahead now. We all want the same thing. We all have a duty to do our best for children and families, as do all people in the county who come into contact with children and families in their everyday work. It's not just us. It's the whole of Herefordshire communities. The best way for us to help children and young people and families is for us to work together. And I really, really welcome everybody's willingness and enthusiasm for doing that. We're much stronger when we work together. So let's use today as a turning point, turn the corner and move forwards together. Thank you. Th th thank you, Councillor. Well, um, the recommendation is that the Council receives and notes the Ofsted inspection report. And I thank members for the debate, and I now draw this item to a close. And I would like most sincerely to thank members of the public and councillors for their attendance and participation at today's meeting. The next scheduled meeting of the council is the ordinary meeting at 10 a.m. on Friday, the 21st of October. And the time is now, well, it is 5.45, and the meeting is now closed. And can I check the Democratic Services team that the live stream